Hello there, I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com and in this video we'll be looking at adding shadows and highlights specifically to a curled over photograph. Let me just click over here and you can see the photograph I'm talking about. Now in the last video that I made we made this curl with the warp tool. Now there was a few problems but we managed to overcome them and uh, now we're just going to add a few shadows and highlights just to give it a bit more of a 3D feel to it. Okay, let's go back to the image that we got to at the end of using warp and you can see that it looks very flat indeed. Let me zoom out, double click the hand tool just to fit it on the screen. It looks very flat and it's also off kilter because we've lost the top of the video, uh, excuse me, I've lost the top of the photo. Uh, it's off center now as well. So we need to work on that, but that's easy enough. Let's work on the shadows first of all. I'm going to zoom in, I'm just going to hold down Z or Z and zoom into this area at the top here just so we've got the part where we want to add a shadow. So we need a shadow underneath here. Okay, first things first, let's make a selection. So let's go and get our elliptical marquee because an elliptical marquee kind of resembles the area that we want to select. Remember, we only want our shadow to be in this area here. So we, we need to restrict where we're going to work. So let's make our, excuse me, let's make our elliptical marquee. I'm going to deselect that. It's not what I wanted at all. Let's try again. An elliptical marquee. And I'm going to start making my selection. I've just clicked and somewhere close, really, and not even tried to get it bang on because I know that I can hold down the space bar and then I can start moving my selection to where I want it to be. And then I can release the spacebar to reshape uh, it. Spacebar again, just to bring it in. And then the spacebar again, move it, reshape it. And I'm roughly about there. Okay, now that is not exactly how I want it, but it's very, very close. So I need to just bring that out into this odd shape. It's not quite a a regular marquee, uh, a regular oval shape really. So that's easily solved. Let me zoom a bit further in so we can see really where we're working. I'm just going to use the hand tool again just to bring our work area into view. And you can see I've missed a bit down the right hand side here. Now I think I've got it about right down there. It's a bit difficult to see, not the greatest of images to work on because it's obviously two shades of brown. Okay, let's uh, see what we can do. So go to the selection menu and then we can bring transfer selection into play. And you can see it brings up these uh, transform handles into play, just like it would do if we were working on, an, on uh, a layer. So now I can start pulling these about and generally trying to, oh, uh, tr generally trying to get it to fit. And that's not bad, but it's not quite right still. We've gone too far now, haven't we? Let's uh, bring that back in a bit. Okay, I'm going to right click and we can warp this as well. So now I can start bringing these other handles into play. And if you don't know much about the warp tool, then I'm going to have a look at the last video because we used the warp tool to make this curl. Okay, I'm reasonably happy. Gone too far. There we go. Maybe a little bit further. Come on, baby, play ball with me. There we go. That's fine. Okay, so I'm quite happy. Let's bring that one just have just a little touch. And in a bit. I'm probably making this a lot more difficult than it needs to be, if I'm honest. Okay, there we go. I'm going to press Enter or Return just to say that's it. That's where I want the selection. You can see it's not a perfect oval and it's a little bit off kilter. Okay, let's make a new layer. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and click New Layer. And so I can name it. I'm going to name this, uh, let's name this back shadow, back shadow, there we go. And I'm going to make sure that black is my foreground color, that I'm working with the gradient tool. And so I'm working black to transparent. If it's not set to that, just need to come down here and it's the second one along, black to transparent. And I also need, excuse me, I also need uh, to make sure that this first option is highlighted the linear gradient so I'll click on that one okay now all I need to do now is make sure I'm working on my back shadow layer click and drag down just at a slight angle I think and then release and there is my shadow bit too dark 
perhaps let's bring that one down to about 70% maybe. Still might be a little bit too dark, but we can fiddle with that in a little while. Control D to deselect our selection. Let's bring back the uh, layer, uh, the uh, image into view. Double click on the hand tool, and that looks okay. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, let's zoom in just a little bit. Yep, looks okay. Pretty good. Okay, but now we need something at the top, really. So let's make another new layer. New layer, and this one time we'll call this one top shadow. Shadow. And this time I want just to be working across the top here just to make it look like it's rolled over. So I could start by control and then clicking on the 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 thumbnail of the image and that will give us a basic outline of our of our selection there which is okay but uh, you know, I could probably then use the back shadow selection to get rid of it it all gets a bit complicated really doesn't it we don't really want to do that let's uh, let's have a bit of a play shall we let's start with the rectangular marquee tool deselect that okay and now from here we know that that's straight up straight the way across we'll bring that across there and you can see that uh, it's nudging its way nicely oh not a bit jaggy okay there we go and we need to just bring this little bit into play as well on the right hand side so let's zoom in again and use the hand tool to bring it into play zoom in a bit more now you may not use the uh, plus and minus is over here in the navigation toolbar uh, in the navigation palette and that's fine it's a bad habit of mine I apologize okay let's right click and uh, no, nope, let's go to selection and transform selection and then let's warp that one and we can just bring this one across here and Bob Shrunkle that one works quite nicely that might need to come in just a tad there we go press enter look at that easy as that Okay, now we need to get our uh, gradient tool again. Again, black foreground color, gradient tool, and the linear gradient. And we're just going to click, and then I'm going to hold shift this time just to keep us to need nice and straight. And I don't want too much here, only about that much. And release, and there we go. Let's drop that one right the way down. In fact, let's go to about 50 on that one, maybe a little bit less, 45-ish. 40, 46 or 44 it wants to go to, doesn't it? 44 will do. Okay, let's deselect that. Double click the hand. And there we have our shadow at the top. Now well, then, something strange has gone on. I don't know what's happened. Oh dear. I didn't come along and uh, transform that bit, did I? Oh dear. Let's get the eraser tool and just go along there like so. There we go. That's fine. Okay. There we go. There's our. Uh, I'm still not happy about that little jaggy bit there. We can deal with that at a later stage. But that's because when we warped it, we didn't quite get them uh, level. Now I mentioned that in the last video, so I'm not going to go over that again. Okay. Lastly, we need a highlights level. So let's go to Alt and I said level. I meant layer. I've got level on the mind now. Alt and click, and then we can go top highlight, top highlight. Uh, this time we want uh, white as our foreground color so if white is your background color all you need to do is click this arrow or press x if it isn't your background color then press d to get the default colors and then x and we want the gradient tool and this time we want this little beauty here which is the reflected gradient again white to transparent and we don't want too much of this at all so let's go very slightly i'm going to hold down the shift key again just to make sure we're level tiny little amount hmm control Z that now uh, you're probably screaming at me going why haven't you highlighted it this time uh, I don't know why am I like let's hire let's get it and select it again see if we can get it right this time okay select it to there let's, uh, selection transform selection warp selection oh I'm all over the place now put himself off let's go over here and then we can warp that one across to there okay and then we can warp this one with that horrible jaggy over to here 
but this one does need a little bit extra help just to get going here we go okay and press enter and there we are okay now we can put our white on there I don't feel I'm making a meal of this now. Uh, white is a foreground colour, gradient tool, and uh, the reflected gradient, and then just a little bit. There we go. Control D to deselect, and we can bring the opacity of this right the way down, just so it gives a little bit of a shine. Where are we at? We're on 36% there. Maybe, maybe a little bit less. About 35% is fine. Okay, and then we'll double click the hand tool to get a full image back on the screen again. And there we go, that's looking good. Now, this kind of distance away from it, it does look like that's coming out there, which is a, annoying me a little bit, but when we zoomed in, it was straight. Maybe it's my eyes going a bit squiffy. Okay, last thing we need to do is to get that a bit more centralized. So let's. Uh, highlight all the layers. I've got my top layer selected. I'm going to shift and click the bottom layer and control E just to bring it all together. Now if I press control on the keyboard and then click on the thumbnail of this layer, you can see that the cursor changes a little bit to a pointy hand with a selection on it. I'm just going to select this layer, do that, and you see it's selected everything. And now I can come up to image and then, sorry, excuse me, I can go image and then crop and it will crop to that selection, which is very helpful. And then I can control D to deselect. And there we go, it's cropped all the way around it. We've got that little line going across the top because I forgot about those jaggy bits at the top. Ugh, what am I like? Okay, finally, let's go to image and then canvas size. And I'm going to make the width 110 and the height 108%. And there we go, it's a reasonably square. A border around the outside. Let's go control and new layer and then fill that alt or option and backspace because white is our foreground color and there we have it. Okay now then it looks still looks a bit flat so let's just add a quick shadow to the to uh, the image. I'm going to create a new layer above this again alt click and call this the uh, shadow. Uh, shadow. Okay, I'm going to get a brush, reasonably large brush, quite soft as well. Um, and now I'm going to be black as my foreground color. Just click around about here and then shift and click down here behind the image or just behind the image. Shift, click, and you see it draws a straight line between the two. And I can reduce the opacity of that one just to give it a bit of a shadow so it looks like it's lifting the page slightly and there we go I got in a bit of a muddle plus you can take a lot more time over yours um, but there we go the general principles of adding shadows and highlights to a curled over image that we created last time with the warp tool thanks very much this time definitely thank you for bearing with me I'm tip squirrel for tipsquirrel.com <laughs>